Hello, welcome to The Grand Gamer. My name is Justin Gray. This here is episode two of HodgePodge. And I'm gonna be honest, as I was getting ready to record this, I forgot to include some items in the video. Also, I'm outside here, so we're going to be doing mainly a voiceover instead of a on-the-fly kind of sound. So, what I have decided is I need a new keyboard tray. Because my desk is custom-built and built it myself, I needed something that would actually support my keyboard so that I could get a little bit more away from my very big television monitor. And I'm gonna walk you through today how exactly I built this new keyboard tray. So the first thing I did was I took a panel from our original kitchen cabinets. Now that panel is going to match my desk. So I believe that it's gonna be very good uh, color. It's going to contrast well as because I'm going to paint the bottom of it and it's going to look pretty good. So in order to do that, I took the panel and I took a piece of, of spare lumber that we just had around the house. And I took the panel, attached it in the corners where I wanted, traced around it, and then cut it out. And so what you're seeing here is I have already done my cuts. I'm now sanding the edges and the corners because I don't want to accidentally catch something or to uh, have any kind of sharp pieces pointing out. Now I'm going to actually start the paint process. You can see I have a few uh, layers on here to begin with. I did not use any etching primer or anything like that. Again, this is just gonna go on the bottom of the tray, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want something that's gonna look nice uh, from the five foot rule, let's say. And you also see the pattern that I'm using. I'm going left to right, turning 90 degrees, and then going left and right again. Now this is how you get a good even pattern whenever you are spray painting. Okay, so now we have gone inside. Apologize for the hideous rug. Eventually I will replace it, but that, that was a kind of rejected hand-me-down that I just kind of grabbed and threw down here. So the tools that we're gonna use, this is an impact driver, okay? It's not a drill. This is specifically designed to screw things into other things. If it gets to the point that it cannot move forward, it makes a impact like a hammer hitting a piece of metal kind of sound. Really useful for when you are driving screws, bits, bolts, that sort of thing. These are the brackets that I picked up online, and it's specifically designed to give a height adjustable keyboard um, the ability to move up and down, and of course it slides in and out, and it is not quite as, uh, I guess the word is depth. It doesn't have the same depth as the keyboard tray itself, but I think that that's, that's gonna be okay. I'm gonna use a couple different clamps so on the left-hand side, might be right side of the, the video for you. These guys, that's gonna help me make sure that this is square. Now you don't need these, um, these kind of clamps in order to make things that are square. It's just, it just makes it easier, especially considering I'm trying to do this on video. On this side, we have just standard pressure clamps. Now these are gonna be used when I go to mount this to my desk. We're gonna use, I think those are one and a quarter inch screws. And then of course I'm gonna have some gloves. Now over here, we have the actual board that I cut outside and painted along with the top of the keyboard tray. Now in order to get the board right, all I did was I traced 
the keyboard tray onto the piece of wood that I was gonna cut, and then I cut it out with a circular saw. Unfortunately, that, that video uh, got corrupted and didn't, didn't make its way out. And the last thing that we're gonna use is just a piece of scrap wood. Now, having scrap wood is actually extremely important for almost every home project that you're gonna see. Simply having a few extra pieces of wood around so that you are able to grab something, uh, either build a scaffold, build a jig, build something that can, that can help with the project itself, extremely important. So keep always try to keep some scrap wood from the projects that you do. Obviously you don't have to keep them all, but having some of them is extremely beneficial. Okay, so for this part, I'm gonna actually sit down. I want a nice, comfortable workspace to be able to work on. And let me angle this a little bit better so that you're able to see how I'm manipulating things. So here, the goal is really going to be to square up these corners as best as I can. So I'm not relying on this to pinch it together. I'm more relying on these just to give me the general shape that I'm looking for. I've used these kind of clamps before. I know that they are in alignment. And what this is going to give me is a visual indicator if things get out of square. So there we go. That's exactly how I want it. Now, like I said, we are going to use one and one fourth inch. Now, one of the topics that I will discuss later, it is so much easier to use millimeters. It really is. This is a 3,000, this is a 318 millimeter screw. Essentially, that's, that's all it is. The reason it is easier to use metric is because the numbers simply can move around. Now the box itself said three and 3.18 centimeters. If I move that, I know I can easily convert that to millimeters and I can use that in a bunch of calculations. Now we're simply talking about adding whole numbers and not having to deal with fractions. But again, we'll, we'll talk about that in another video specifically. So I am, I'm going to risk, I might need to get a drill, but I wanna see how it does without the drill. So I'm gonna risk driving a screw in without drilling a pilot hole. If this were the top or was something that's gonna be seen a lot, I would probably want to pre-drill this simply so that you are able to avoid having the wood open up, splinter more, etc. But I think given the softness of this wood and if I position it correctly, avoiding where I can see that the, the slats of the wood have been brought together, if I avoid getting in between those slats, I think I can avoid splitting the wood. So I'm gonna give it a nice test as close to the center as I possibly can. I'm also gonna to try to be as straight up and down as I can. Now this has a trigger right here, backwards, forwards. You want it in the forward position. This is a Phillips bit. This is an easy extractor for that. I don't have to have this on, um, but for the purposes of, of the demonstration here, I just, I happen to have it on. So that's why that is there. I want to try to stay as vertical as possible and I start off slow and now I'm pretty sh pushing pressure down and this is why I wanted a flatter surface now that was the impact wrench hammer itself that is the noise it will make when it has reached a certain uh, resistance in what it is doing so my screw head is not flush yet, and I do want it slightly flush so that I don't snag anything on here. So I'm gonna drive it a little bit more, and you're probably gonna hear some hammer sounds. I'll do my best to tamp down the video at that point so that you don't have an impact wrench just driving in your, your ear. But so far it hasn't cracked, which I'm very happy about because that, that speeds up the process. So here we go. 
Okay. It is flush. Everything is exactly where I want it to be. And at this point, I'm going to examine it. I want to make sure that I didn't poke through on the other side. And as I move my hand, I can tell I didn't. And I'm also looking to make sure that this gap, which is going to be there, um, that is expected. I expected there to be some gap in between this. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it's more function over form. But at the same time, I do want it to look as nice as I possibly can make it look. So we are in good shape in terms of making sure that things are together. So let's put my guides back. If I had two pieces of wood that I was trying to screw together in a corner, that's how this is actually designed for. One piece of wood, one piece of wood, this clamps together, holds them together at a, a 45 degree, or you can manipulate it to try to adjust that as well. Again, I'm just gonna check my corners. I wanna make sure that I am as square as possible. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to do a row one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for a total of nine screws. At that point, I'm gonna take a look and see how it has come out. If it looks okay, if I think it's gonna to stay together, which is ultimately the, the purpose that it's gonna serve, uh, I'll, I'll just move forward. But if it's going to come apart, then obviously I don't want to just leave it at that, that amount of screws. I'll apply some additional screws and, and get things going. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, probably fast forward here in the video. Now right there, it did something. It tried to separate, and so what I did was I applied additional force and I just feathered the actual impact wrench. That pulled things together, made a nice tight bond over there, and it didn't drive too far down into the wood. So I have no, no belief that that's gonna be poking through or potentially snagging on the other side. That's exactly the way that you want it to be. Tighten together, but not poking through. Got a little bit of separation there, but I think that that will be okay. Again, this is the bottom half. It does not have to be perfect. At this point, these guys are not gonna help us as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. We're going to finish it up. Already this is getting more sturdy and more put together, which is exactly the purpose of having the two boards. The, two, the one board by itself and the other board by itself wasn't thick enough, it wasn't strong enough, in my opinion, to hold. Hold up to gaming abuse. And so by putting these two together, I have a larger surface on the side for the mount, but I also have a lot more uh, torque resistance, if you will. Okay, that is all my screws and I'm gonna put in the most important thing on this side. This is my finished side. I don't have any screw heads poking through. If I did, that would be extremely, extremely problematic. And so not having 
that issue makes me extremely excited about how this came out. Now, the next part that we're going to do is actually mount the sliders for the keyboard tray. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take apart this portion here that actually moves. This is what it rides on. This is going to attach to the desk and actually support the weight. But this part here is what is going to move and they, they all have their own kind of internal mechanism. Probably I'm going to need a Phillips screwdriver. Nope. Okay. I can just do it by hand. Maybe. Yeah. So this one, I, I had a little push portion there that I could push in to release it. So we're going to slide them apart. And what you're going to mount this to is you have a few different hole options. Three of them have vertical adjustments. One, two, three, four of them are basically perfect adjustment, <laughs> no adjustment. Uh, and then you have one that gives you some horizontal adjustment there as well. So because my concern is a bit more on the horizontal, I'm gonna place my first screw here, get things adjusted that way. And then I'm gonna put my second screw here on the last vertical. So that's gonna give me a little play horizontally and play vertically so that I get this perfectly level and perfectly straight. For something like this with a keyboard that's designed to slide in and out, that is extremely important that you have this exactly dialed in so that you don't have to worry about that portion of the mechanism. Okay, we are back on the floor and we got some additional tools out. So first, I, I should have already had this, pen and paper, because you, likely you will need to write some things down. So most of the time that plays in. This is my level. We're gonna actually use this mostly when we're trying to get it level on the desk itself. This level is going to help make sure that the bracket when we attach it is actually sitting level because that's what we want, a level keyboard. This, um, L-square, T-square, a couple different names. Uh, I've heard this called, essentially I use this for two purposes. One is to actually make sure that something is square, but then also this, this ruler itself provides excellent um, measuring capabilities. It's not quite as long as a standard 12 inch ruler. Um, and I have used this for numerous, numerous products and projects. I don't know if you can see, but I have plenty, plenty of marks along the side from using that. Okay, so during the pause there, I brought down my mat because I kind of realized that this isn't going to slide out enough. I actually need an 11 and a half inch slide to get the entire mat itself out from behind the keyboard. This extra room, I'm gonna use this for cable management. I might put my pens there, might put a little keyboard tra or a tray, kind of like that to just hold things um, behind the desk. But I need 11 and a half inches of play and I'm not going to get that with this slide. That means I have to determine how much I'm willing to let it stick out. I'm, I'm okay with a bit of stick out from my desk. That's just what kind of happens with these kind of DIY projects. If I really get annoyed with it, I will get a longer slide mechanism that will give me more play and, and then I'll just basically just swap things out. So doing the math, this is an eight inch slide. Eight inches from the, its end point here to its end point here. That means I have eight inches of play. I need an 11 and a half, which means I need to have this sticking out three and a half inches. And so I went ahead and marked three and a half on the side of the panel here so that I know where the end stop of my slider needs to be. Now, the other thing, I don't want anything coming into contact with the edges of these sliders. This will not feel good if you run up against these. 
And as such, I want to avoid that, <laughs> obviously. So we have here the opportunity to have a certain amount of height adjustability in this. So what I did was I measured the inside contact point of the slider mechanism, and I also drew a line for that. So now I know the initial mounting point for this bracket, which means it's going to sit roughly right there. Now I'm not as concerned about adjusting and getting a perfect square because again, the last hole that we're gonna use is going to give us that vertical alignment, but I am very interested to make sure that we have the right horizontal. So the hole I'm going to use to screw this in is going to be this one right here with the horizontal adjustment. So let's go ahead and get a screw. Now I looked at the screws that were sent in the package. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that depth. I would like something with a little bit more bite. So I'm gonna use the standard, these are just drywall. Again, 318 millimeter or inch and a quarter screws. So most of my projects, I might have a table that I can actually use um, as my guides and, and, and helps get everything in position. I'm in my basement. My basement does not have that table. I do not feel like dragging that table downstairs. So I am having to do this in a kind of haphazard way here of just holding it with my feet. But for right now, the most important position, marking-wise, is that top. Now you're gonna screw this in just enough that it doesn't completely bite, right? So I still am able to adjust up and down. I'm not able to do horizontal, which is the main purpose. So I'm gonna back that off you saw how little I actually backed that off, and now I have the adjustable play again. Height-wise, we're exactly where I wanted to be. And I'm gonna nail, screw that side in because now horizontally, I'm exactly where I wanna be. So we're gonna apply just a little bit more bite. It doesn't have to be perfect, not yet. You want to try to keep things with some play. Wow. That's already level. Huh. Go me. All right. So I want to make sure that this bracket is level. And the nice thing about levels is they will generally work at any angle that you need them to because it's just a ball that's floating in water. It's a bubble floating in, in water. So height-wise, that looks fantastic. So we're going to put a screw in for the height side. Okay, now notice I did not finish screwing it all the way in again. I still have some play. Why? Because I need to measure again. Pretty much spot on perfect. Let's finish it off. <laughs> As I missed the hole. Now, what did it do? It gripped it up just a little bit. I'm looking at my level. Level says it's okay. If for some reason it kicked it off too much, back it off a little, adjust, which I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm not as happy with that. I'm gonna back it a little bit, adjust it just a little bit more, to the point where I know it's going to grip it, and maybe distort it. And so I'm gonna put extreme amount of pressure, as much as I can with just my hand, keep it from moving. Now, you heard it started to spin. That probably means I'm not getting as good of a bite as what I want in there. 
that's fine. That's why you put in a few screws. Before we spin a screwing these items down though, we need to test this part. So, this is going to slide like this. hit that stop, and then um, that's how we're gonna mount it to the actual desk. So I'm just making sure that everything is aligned the way that I want it to be, making sure that the stops are gonna be correct, and making sure that my overhang is still in the area that I want it to be. So everything on this side looks perfectly spot on exactly where I want it to be. So I will finish just screwing these items in. Now, this is a softer wood. That's probably why the screw is not biting as much as it would in some other options. I want to make sure though that things are going as straight as I can so I don't have clearance issues. And for the most part, that's not going to budge, right? We have enough pressure pushing on that bracket that this should not move. Okay, like I mentioned, I made this desk. So I'm checking to make sure that this is sticking out as far as I want it to because I'm gonna to have to add an extra board to actually mount it and hold it into place. So we're outside in my garage and my driveway and just a quick little plug, I love this retracting extension cable. Makes things so much easier to operate and work on. Okay, now we have my miter saw. You can see I just plopped it down on the back of my tailgate on my truck. Now you will not have to get this complicated with building a keyboard tray for yourself. This is simply based upon the fact that I built this myself and didn't put in a full uh, support on the bottom. So again, you're not gonna run into this problem. This DIY solution is actually very easy to do yourself. So hopefully you won't actually run into any of the complications that you're seeing here. But the big thing is, if you do run into problems, when it comes to working with wood, there's always a solution. No matter what, you're going to be able to solve just about any issue that comes up. More lumber, glue, screwing things together. It might just take a trip to Lowe's or Home Depot, but you're going to be able to solve most problems that you're going to run into when you are working with wood of some kind. So here, I'm just sanding the rough edges. You'll notice the theme. I don't like rough cuts. I don't want things to accidentally catch. I just want a nice smooth surface. I'm not even gonna paint these. I'm gonna leave them rough and just mount them under the desk so nobody's gonna see and mount the brackets to them. Okay, so ignore that. That's cable management. Uh, you can even see I've, I've been doing some cable management under here. Um, I've had to tear it out, redo, tear it out, redo, all because I'm rebuilding a studio. That's, that is what this here is also for. Also, don't worry about the fact that I had to put in this brace and cross drill and, and all of that. <clears throat> I built a desk. And as such, I did not put in a full bottom to it, right? I put in two by sixes and just, just went with that. But obviously in this instance, we needed something to grab onto and, and that became this. So this side here is set to three 
front and back. The other side is set to four, but it is perfectly level across the top. And that's exactly what we want. We want a nice level surface for the keyboard and the mouse, nothing sliding around. I also noticed that it was slightly torqued, so it wouldn't fully latch in without a hard push. So I backed off the screws just a little bit so that I could realign the brackets and how they were basically facing in order to get the final result that I was looking for. So now I'm going to finish screwing in the rest of the screws and I will show you the final product. Okay, so there you have it. Everything is secure and in place and the keyboard itself slides right out, locks in place with relatively smooth action and then slides right back. Now it does stick out, right? That's the three and a half inch stick out. I'm gonna see how, how I like it. If I hate it, I'll simply replace the brackets and, and go from there. But the majority of the work is done. You can see that keyboard will now be on this keyboard tray and I will have a nice even surface down here, mouse, keyboard, plenty of room to play and a clean, clean desktop for other things like cameras and microphones. All right, I hope this video was informative. I hope that you learned something and that you also understand that even if problems come up, even if things are a little bit difficult, there are solutions to be found in woodworking, in computers, technology, everything. You are gonna be able to overcome those things with just a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of stick to itness. You'll be able to do it. Thank you. Have a great day. Remember to like, subscribe, ring the bell. Please tell your friends. I'm trying to grow the channel. And this kind of content is exactly the, the purpose of HodgePodge to get more people interested and then ultimately following what we are trying to do with making a game. So again, thank you. Have a great weekend.